Hello! This series is intended to help people understand how to interact with the Star Wars system as it exists on Foundry. Although I'm creating this video series, the wiki does exist and is editable by the community, so it serves to answer more in-depth questions, and Discord also exists. You can talk interactively with people there. This video in particular is intended to help figure out how to set up a world and, and make it usable. By usable here, what I mean is it will have actors, it will have items, it will allow the GM to start prepping for a session. This video uses Foundry 12.327, Star Wars 1.901, and has no active modules. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and download two things. Ogdude's character generator, you can Google it and click download files and Star Wars Adversaries. You can Google that, you'll end up on a page like this. Hit source, and code, and download zip. Next up, we're going to create the world. So let's click Install System, and type in Star Wars, and hit Install. Next, we're gonna create a world. You can call this whatever you want but make sure you pick Star Wars as the game system. Load into it and log in. There's no password by default. Okay, so we have no actors, no items, no journals, no role tables, but lots of compendiums, all of which are empty. So we're gonna start populating those. To do so, grab that SW character gin gen that you just downloaded and extract it. Go into it and right click data and zip that up. And then come over here to settings, configure settings, Star Wars, Ogdu dataset importer, and choose the data.zip that you just created. Not this, this will not work. Specifically the data.zip. Click load, check all the boxes for anything that you actually want to load. The first time I recommend everything and hit start import. This will take a while, but we can see that the items are starting to get populated. Okay, so as that wraps up, we can start our next import and that's the adversaries import. So you can see we have a Star Wars Adversaries Compendium, but it's still empty. So we're going to swap over to here, choose the file, and grab the Adversaries zip that we downloaded. Note that these cannot be running at the same time. You need to let the Ogdu data set importer finish first. Now you can hit Start Import, and it will import the hundreds of actors that are on that website. Okay, so now that that import has finished, what we're going to want to do is create our critical injury items. To do that, we click over here on the items tab. I've already done it, so you can see them here. If I click create item, add them as a critical injury, and populate it. Note that this T100 roll low and high does need to be set properly. So once those are all created, we can go ahead and look for the macro. The macro is on the wiki. Each time you update the system, you'll get a message that looks like this with useful links. We can click System Wiki, which will bring us over to the wiki, and click Macros. And we can see Create Critical Injuries table. As it says here, you need to create the critical injuries before running this macro. They also need to exist in the world, not in a compendium. So we're gonna expand the code, hit copy, lapse the code, come on over to here, create a macro by clicking on any one of these boxes, change it to script, not chat, so that it actually works, drop the text in and hit execute. We close that now, and if we come over to rollable tables, we'll see that we've got a rollable table from all of those 
items that we spent forever filling out. Uh, I've got duplicates because I accidentally duplicated some of the items, but you won't unless you also duplicate some of the items. Okay, so next is creating a scene. I'm gonna go ahead and create one real fast. Okay, so I've created a scene with no tweaks to the settings. I just set a background image. You can tell that by default, Foundry uses a grid. This isn't particularly helpful for the Star Wars system as rules is written at least. The system uses range bands and not a tactical grid. So what we can do is we can configure our scene, go to the grid tab, and set it to gridless. This cleans it up a lot and helps it to look cinematic, which Star Wars typically is. Those are all of the core concepts that I wanted to cover in this video, so I'm going to move on to some gotchas. The compendiums over here that were created by default that we just populated are wiped every time you update the system. So you will need to go and re-import all of that data each time. Luckily, it's quite fast. I just did it, so you can do it each time. It's not a big deal. And I frequently release updates that improve the importer. So you'll get better data anyway. Well, chances are anyway. Next up, I've seen some people with a desire to import, I don't know, every career and every one of these items, right? So that they're, or actors would be a better one so you can actually see it, right? So that they're in this list as well. This is a bad idea. When you load Foundry, what happens is it sends each person joining a copy of all of these items, all these actors, all the journal pages and everything before actually finishing loading the page. This is not the case for things in compendiums. Compendiums are not sent to the player until they open the item in the compendium. Which means if you import all these items, it's going to take a really long time for everyone to load into the world. And it won't help that much because they're all available here anyway when you actually want to use them. Uh, also to note, the Star Wars Adversary Importer is not perfect all of the time. Sometimes small stats will be off, usually soak or wounds, or items won't be equipped. You can see that here. Just go through and check it. Check it against either the website or the books, or live with it. It's not that big a deal, and nobody says it has to be perfect to what the... Uh, what the source material is. Note that I just clicked this and it didn't actually edit. You can't edit it while it's in the compendium. You do need to actually import it to be able to edit it. That's everything and the next video will be covering actors, how to create them, how to use them, how to play with them, all of that jazz. So hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed this one and are looking forward to the next one as much as I am. Bye-bye.